All right, we're going to start on our snow. So to create our snow, we're going to use Newton for the simulation. And pastiche, you'll see, will be very useful in placing our snow. To start, we'll create a new composition called Snow Clean 01. We're going to be creating three in total. By changing certain settings, I will be able to create depth and richness in my animation, and therefore in my final result. Uh, we will therefore create this first animation. So, I'm going to bring a few things into this sim, just copy and paste them across. I'm going to start by creating a shape layer. I'm going to clean it up a little and change the color to something a bit easier to see. To start, I'm just going to create and place my snow. So my snow is going to be many different circles. I'm just going to put its anchor point in the center. Call it flake 01 and now duplicate. Okay, so I've got about 130, 140 of them, and that should be great. And what I'm going to do is use pastiche to position my snowflakes. Now create a pre-composition and call it snow cache. PST for pastiche. I'm just going to go search for pastiche and now launch it. Just going to make my background a little more transparent so that we can see what's going on here. So if I click on create, it'll make like a collage of my snowflakes. The flakes are a little bit too big, so I'm just going to go into the options and put my rescaling at about 30%. Hmm. Still a bit too big. Maybe 25. I now have all of my snow placed. So, the only thing that we're missing now is the animation. So, we're going to go back in here, and I'm going to copy and paste my cache. Get rid of the fill so that we can, uh, so we can see the snow. Add a stroke. And now I need the animation, which is, uh, which is my globe. I'm going to hide it and then attach my cache to it. And uh, change its name to globe outline. Great, so I think I've got all I need here. Now, I think you know where we're going. Let's dive into Newton. 
All right, right away, I'm going to change the precision of my globe boundary. And then I'm going to decrease my gravity by a lot from 10 to 1. And the boundary is also going to be kinematic so that it comes with the animation of the globe. Oh, so there was actually something that I needed to do here. I need to make sure that I have this final key so that the animation will stay static. Great, I can go back into Newton, and what do we get now? So, the snow is going all over the place, which is what we want. And you can really see what the effect of changing the gravity did. When not being shaken by the globe, they're moving much slower. And this gives us the impression that they're floating in liquid. For all of my slow flakes, I'm going to add some damping. Change that to 5. Now what do we have? Okay, so you can see how they're all sticking together now. There's less chaotic movement. I'm also going to increase my substeps in order to have a more precise animation. So you can see here that once the snowflake's moving, they're compact. They don't really fill the space of my globe. I'm not a big fan of that. So to fix that, I think we should use the magnetism tool. In magnetism, we have two options, attraction or repulsion. And what we're going to use is repulsion, just so that they don't clump together. Something super important is that I'm going to decrease the repulsion enormously like 0 0.02 and then I'm gonna decrease the distance that they can push each other. Now some randomizing just like 1%. Alright, let's see how it looks. So, you can see that the snowflakes do repulse each other, and by pushing, they take up more space. I think that I need to decrease the gravity just a bit more. Okay, so I'm thinking that they move a lot. So what I can do is select all of my objects and decrease the level of magnetism even more to 0 0.01. Okay, it should be good like that. So the idea is to have this simulation and then have some more which we will then superimpose onto each other. And this will give us the illusion of having more depth in our snow globe. Just to stay safe, I'm going to save this and call it snow. Uh, snowflakes. Just in case I change my mind or I do something dumb and change the settings completely and mess up another animation, I have this here uh, to come back to and reset from. Now render.
All right, what does this give us? And now I'm going to change its name to Snow Sim. Hide the boundary. And I can now take it directly into my main animation. I'm going to stick it in the foreground so that we can see what's going on. So, now that we've done one, we can do the others. So, to create the new animation, I'm just going to grab the first animation and duplicate it. Open it up. Hide the borders. Reopen pastiche. And I want my flakes to be even smaller on this one. And I hit create. And voila. Add my border again. And now I can start Newton. Now, if I select my objects, they take the place of the objects in the original composition. So, to fix this, I want to right click, go to Reset, and click Body Transform. And it will now have the objects from the new version. What I want to do now is to create a new animation that's slightly different from the first one. Take all of my objects and maybe increase the damping to about 8. Great. Now, render. So, here I have a new version of the animation of my flakes, and I did this very quickly. And I can also integrate this right away. Change the name to Sim02. Again, hide the border. And for these two next smaller ones, I'm going to stick them behind the other objects. And maybe I can blur them a little. Nice. What is it like? And now I'm starting to get some proper depth. All right, now for one last time. Reduplicate. Hide the border. Pastiche. Change the size again. Jump into Newton. Ah, damn. We have lost the settings, so I'll just get them from here. That's why it's important to save your files, folks. I'll take these elements and make a body transformation. Here, I'll add maybe, a, maybe some more gravity. some damping and we'll have that at around six and maybe also change the push of the magnetism
Great. Now render. I need to uh, hide the border. And I can add it to my main composition. And maybe some blur on this one, uh, on this one too. And voila! We have finished that section and finished this tutorial. I hope that you've enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask, and see you next time.